thank you, boy. Let us stand and sing with vigor while we stomp our feet to keep warm. Our opening hymn. Lovely, thank you. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and really magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. I'm reading the collect for the feast day of St. Francis. Let us pray. Most high, omnipotent, good Lord, grant your people grace to renounce gladly the vanities of this world, that following the way of blessed Francis, 
we may for love of you delight in your whole creation with perfectness of joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. reading from Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, You speak to us and we will listen. But do not let God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 19. Let us pray this portion of the Psalter responsibly by whole verse. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells his tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, their voices are not heard. Their sound has gone out into all lands. In the deep he has set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chambers. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of the end. Nothing is hidden from its burning. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, and give wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just, and rejoice the heart. The commandments of the Lord is clear, and give light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true, and the righteous altogether. More to be desired are they in the by them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends, cleansing my secret faults? Above all, keep your servants from presumptuous sins, and let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I behold and sound an innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, 
as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But... The tenant seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them the same way. Finally, he sent his son, saying, Favor respect my son, but when the tenant saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? His listeners said to him, they will book those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and Pharisees heard this parable, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded Jesus as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, good morning. If you're Charlie, just think of poor Christopher. He's wearing shorts this morning. <laughs> good job, Chris. Uh, today, today we honor Francis of Assisi. I get asked by people if we have saints in the Episcopal Church, and I always say, well, sort of. In the front of the prayer book, there's the holy men and women that we observe, you know, our special days, of course, our feast days, Christmas, Easter, but we also recognize saints. And of course, one of the most beloved saints is St. Francis of Assisi. Here in the Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement, can you hear me okay back there, Steve Victor? No. Deal. Deal. You okay? You can always move and give us sunshine, which is what I'm going to do in about a minute. Uh, we have a book, Lesser Feasts and Fasts, which basically has colics like the one I read today about St. Francis and a little bit of background. So I wanted to share with you the background that we have in our book, Lesser Feasts and Fasts, about St. Francis of Assisi, which was not his original name, apparently. He was baptized under another name, and they renamed him because his mother liked France, apparently. So there you are. There you are. Francis, though not his original name, was the son of a prosperous merchant of Assisi, which is in Italy. And he was born in 1182. His early youth was spent in harmless revelry and fruitless attempts to win military glory. He was wounded, he recovered, he wanted to go back and join the military and get glory, but then he went to a church where he had encounters with beggars and lepers, and he did not like lepers. But this pricked his conscience, and he decided at that time to embrace a life devoted to lady poverty which included going to churches and praying and worshiping and giving things to both beggars and lepers. He overcame his dislike of lepers. Despite his father's intense opposition and his father thought he was insane, Francis totally renounced all material values, which included taking off all of his clothes and walking into the woods naked to live. He devoted himself to serving the poor. In 1210, Pope Innocent III, Pope Innocent III confirmed Francis's simple rule, that's rule with the capital R, for the orders of Friars Minor a name Francis chose to emphasize his desire to be among the least of God's servants. And these were brothers, brothers who would go through the communities begging for support and giving almost everything they received. The term is mendicant, mendicant friars to the poor. The order grew rapidly over all of Europe. Francis traveled at this time. He actually went to the Holy Land where the Crusades were going on and preached to the Muslims. They were so impressed with his piety and his simplicity. At this time, Jerusalem was in the hand of Muslims that they gave him permission to go to Jerusalem and see the holy moly, to see the holy sites. He didn't go. He had to return back to Italy because uh, there were kind of problems with the Franciscans. Uh, he lost control of the order and the idea of strict and absolute poverty, both for the individual friars and the order as a whole, was found to be too difficult to maintain. So he came up with another rule, kind of relaxing the original rule for the friars. His last years were spent in much suffering of body and spirit, but his unconquerable joy never failed. Not long before his death, during a retreat on Mount Laverna, Francis received, this is on Holy Cross Day, the marks of the Lord's wounds, the stigmata, 
in his own hands and feet inside. He never told anyone except a few close associates knew. That was not generally known until after he died. Pope Gregory IX, which had been a patron of the Franciscans, canonized Francis in 1228, about six months after he died. It was a rush to canonize him, but he was well beloved. I think that kind of happened with Pope John Paul II, that there wasn't much of a delay before he was canonized. It was the same type of affection for Francis. And at that time, the church began the erection of the Great Basilica in Assisi, where Francis is buried. I love this line. Of all the saints, Francis is the most popular and admired, but probably the least imitated. Few have attained to his total identification with the poverty and suffering of Christ. I think Francis is best known from the prayer and you're all familiar with this prayer, right? Because it's in our prayer book. If we have prayer books, we'd all say it together, so I'm going to be the solo voice. This prayer can change lives. It changed my life. Uh, you ever heard the old joke about you get up in the morning and you meet a jerk, and he or she's the jerk, and you get up in the morning and you meet jerks all day, and you're the jerk. You've heard that joke, right? Okay, I went through a rough time in my life, I met jerks all day, every day. I didn't know what was wrong with everybody. I stumbled across this prayer. I kept it in my pocket. I tried to live it. It changed my life, and here we are. So, we're not quite done, but we're going to let us pray, and I'll say it all for you. And you all know this, the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And I'm, I'm actually repeating myself, but a couple of weeks ago I preached. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Better, better, sorry about that. Ah, oh, a couple of weeks ago I preached, and I mentioned Pete Hine, who's a uh, polymath, who means a person who's very proficient in a lot of things. He wrote, uh, during World War II, a little poems called Greeks, which were originally part of the resistance against the Nazis. He kept doing that afterwards. I was introduced to these a long time ago, but I love this, and I think this sums up St. Francis's prayer. And I really, really, I try, I don't always succeed, but I, I, I try to live, live by this. So this is, and after I uh, uh, shared this two weeks ago, I ordered the book. Can you all see this? You know, you can get basically everything on the internet. So this is from Gluck's 2. I had Gluck's 1, which didn't include this. So this is called The Me Above the Me, and I really think this is Francis's prayer in a nutshell. Giving in is no defeat. Passing on is no retreat. Selves are made to rise above. You shall live in what you love. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah, could you get the booklet for me, Victor? It's under the cup. All righty. Our worship continues with no more feedback. But standing as we are able, we affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. Thank you. We believe.
that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God not made, one being with the Father, for him all things are made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and not crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Through the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The Christian church is the vineyard of the Lord with all its needs and problems. Growing the grapes, making the wine, managing the Lord's work. Let us pray to the Lord of the vineyard, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. That the fruit of our common prayer and ministry be the Eucharistic wine, which will soon unite all in Christ the vine and make us one. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That our leaders in both church and state may accept their stewardship and accountability to God, and that there may be a rich harvest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, may lift from our suffering world its burdens of anxiety, war, violence for all, including the people of Israel, the burdens of oppression, poverty, and disease, and that God's fruitfulness will give life to all in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the Lord's vineyard may quickly extend its healthy branches throughout the world, sheltering the people with Christ's gentleness and loving kindness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That Jesus, the stone which the builders rejected, may be recognized as the keystone of church and creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. On the commemoration of St. Francis' Feast Day, let us offer praise and thanksgiving for God's good creatures, particularly those we have called into our homes as pets. Let us pray to the Lord. In the World Council of Churches Cycle of Prayer, pray for the people of Costa Rica, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Panama. In the Kansas Cycle of Prayer, Pray for St. Paul's Leavenworth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those serving in the armed forces, Devin Allen, Murphy Bright, Ben Dybel, Michael Green, Harvey Hazelton, Benjamin Karpinski, Alex Shaw, Jose Teo, Colin Kelly, Magali Garten, Frank Bedner, Grant Bedner. Henry Knigendorf, Sean Bess, and Maxwell Hazelden. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the health and strength of Joe, Becca, and Polly Trainer, Leroy and Karen Klein, Clayton Clevenger and family, Cindy Keller, Trudy Vanderweide, Scott Forson, Craig and Jeanette Burris, Maxton Fuller, Kyle Roberts, Jeannie and Bruce Miller, John Burtwell and family, Teresa Texter, and Dalton Peebler. Let us pray the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the birthdays of Novell Atkinson, Victor Clark, and Chris Johnston, and for the anniversary of Nat and June Cassingham. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 
Lord of the harvest, we pray that our global Christian community may fulfill your son's prayer and that we may soon be one in the name of Christ as he is in you, his Father, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Ah, we have a birthday and an anniversary here. Mr. Clark. Come on down. Mr. Clark. Two birthdays? All right, when? What day? That is to Tuesday. You? Saturday. Yesterday? This coming Saturday. Okay, well let us pray. Watch over your children, O oh Lord. As their days increase. increase. Less than... Okay, and we have an anniversary. So, uh, we see you back there, Mrs. Cassingham. Okay. Congratulations. What is the actual date? October 11th. Oh, is that Wednesday? Wednesday. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Happy anniversary. I think I'm, I recall when you got married. I think I might. Yes. Yes, okay. A lot of these people were there. Yes, great to celebrate this together. Let us pray. Oh, gracious. Happy anniversary. Thank you. They're, they're, I know. Yay! Together. And don't kneel as you are able. <laughs> Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Happy anniversary. 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 Happy anniversary
Uh, we're good? Okay. All right. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Worship continues with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. And you made us in your image to call us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, 
our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, and this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your soul, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! The gifts of God for the people of God.
Our worship continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, I don't know if there's any official announcements. I just wanted to thank Dennis, Brenda, Victor, Boyd for setting up outside again. So I know it takes some work, but they do an excellent job, so God bless you for everything you do. I hope everybody has a great week, a beautiful day, and gets out today and soaks up this beautiful sunshine. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and remain with you always. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jonathan mentioned it last week. So this week we have our lovely packets for everybody to go out to prayerfully consider your pledges for the 2024 uh, year. So I have everybody's name on most of them. If ever your name is not on something, um, talk to me. I will get you a copy of anything you need. So again, please prayerfully consider your pledge for 2024 without you like we can't do any of this so we appreciate everything that you give and everything that you are and your wealth and your wisdom and your work not just your treasure but everything you do for us uh, father sean mentioned like the setting up here and everything like that so we appreciate everything you can do for us so if you're here i will be giving this to you um, there is a tree in the narthex where you can put your pledge cards into the lovely bucket or the lovely uh, tree bucket thing that I made. So <laughs> I am not Debbie Fowler, but I try. Um, so uh, once you prayerfully consider, you can put it there or you can mail it or you can put it in the collection offerings throughout the month. We'll have people speaking every week for the next few weeks about stewardship and how important it is and why you should give your time, treasure, talent, wealth, wisdom, work to St. Luke's. And also we have a youth group on Sunday, next Sunday, October 15th, youth group.